The city of Albuquerque and Bernalillo County have embarked on an exciting project, ABC to Z. A standing for Albuquerque, BC standing for Bernalillo County. Together, the city and the county are working on an update to the jointly adopted comprehensive plan, first adopted in 1975, updated in 1988, amended in 2001 to include centers and corridors, and last touched in 2013. The Z in ABC to Z stands for zoning, and within the city only, the city intends to go on from the comprehensive plan and implement the plan through a new and improved zoning ordinance. We're calling it the Integrated Development Ordinance, which will include zoning and other regulations for development of private land and transportation within the city. How does the comprehensive plan relate to zoning? Through the ABC to Z project, we're taking lots of public engagement, opportunities for meetings, focus groups, workshops, that will really set the tone and priorities for the comprehensive plan and, within the city, the zoning ordinance. The comprehensive plan provides policies and priorities. These are the should, the things that the city and the county should be doing to get to the community vision. The zoning and regulatory portion will map to the county's zoning ordinance and within the city, the brand new integrated development ordinance. These are the shall, the requirements that all developments have to follow for private development and projects within the public right of way. At the end of the ABC to Z process, we hope that there will be two documents governing land use and transportation within the city. One is the policy document, the comprehensive plan, which will include goals and policies from rank one, rank two, and rank three plans, as well as any new goals and policies needed to get to the community vision. The regulatory document will be the integrated development ordinance, which will include a new and updated zoning code, subdivision ordinance, pieces of the development process manual guiding development within the public right-of-way, an updated planning ordinance, and overlay zones, as well as zoning from sector development plans, which are currently the Rank 3 plans in the city. ABC to Z is attempting to address many trends, issues, challenges, and opportunities facing the city and the county. So the Mid-Region Council of Governments is a body made up of the four county region. MERCOG, as it is referred to, is responsible for the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, a regional long-range plan done every five years that includes a population forecast, a long-range transportation system map, and for the first time, a preferred scenario for growth to 2040. In past metropolitan transportation planning efforts, MERCOG has looked at the trends guiding transportation and land use and tried to determine what the congestion impacts, air quality impacts, uh, and other factors are in how we're growing. The region for the first time has gone beyond this trends approach to look at other scenarios that could be possible if the local jurisdictions pass updates to zoning and other land use policies to get to a better future, a way to improve congestion across river crossings, to improve mixed use developments that help support transit in the region, as well as biking and walking. This preferred scenario will be at the heart of the plan, the comprehensive plan update, as well as zoning changes within the city. The Metropolitan Transportation Plan for 2040 provides a forecast for growth in both the city and the county. Both are expected to grow to 2040. The rate of growth in both the city and the county is less than we once expected, but both are still growing. People are still having babies, people are still moving to our region because of our livability and our beautiful setting. It is important to plan for the growth that we expect in both the city and the county in the future. Demographic shifts are expected to be a major factor in how our region grows over time. Boomers, those aged 50 through 68, and millennials, those aged 14 through 32, will have a major impact in the demographic shifts, the marketing, the housing needed in the region, 
and it is important to plan for these changes. By 2040, the number of people over 65 is expected to triple within the region. The share of population to 2040 is only 20% those families with children. This is a very big change from past generations. Housing within the city and the county is predominantly owner-occupied, but in the future, rentals will be increasingly important as many are choosing not to own homes but are looking to be more mobile. Demographic shifts will impact the kinds of housing options that our citizens need. In addition, our region will need more townhomes and more multifamily options. Housing in the city and the county is currently very affordable if you own your home. If you are a renter, however, almost one out of every four units is either unaffordable or severely unaffordable. The shift to more rentals will mean that we need careful housing planning to make sure that there are affordable rental options for those who need it. One of the biggest challenges our region faces is the imbalance of jobs and housing west of the Rio Grande. Although the Albuquerque region is expected to grow in both households and jobs, very few jobs will be located on the west side. Careful planning and incentives will be needed to improve the balance of jobs and housing west of the river. This will help decrease the congestion on river crossings, which are expected to worsen over time. Transportation options are also shifting in our region. The amount we all travel by car is actually decreasing and has been decreasing since 2004. This follows a national trend, but it's true locally. At the same time, transit ridership, both by bus and also by the rail runner, has increased dramatically. A travel preference survey done by the Mid-Region Council of Governments in 2013 found that the satisfaction with our current transportation choices differed depending on your age group. Those 18 through 34 were the least satisfied with our transportation options. The millennial generation tends to want more choices for walking and biking as well as transit. The distance we all travel, whether as pedestrians, cyclists, transit users, or drivers, depends on your age group. Millennials and boomers travel the least every day. Those between the ages of 32 and 49 are still taking their kids everywhere, usually by car. Across all ages, the amount we travel per day is growing less compared to generations the same age from the past. These travel differences are a big planning opportunity to create more opportunities to travel by foot, by transit, and on bikes. Nationally, there is a growing demand for walkable and urban environments. Almost one out of two people have responded to surveys that they want to live in a walkable community. Even if we were to build all new development as walkable environments, by 2040, we would still not be able to meet the demand. Local preferences match national trends. The Mid-Region Council of Governments in a travel preference survey asked where people live now and where they want to live in the future. Although most people responded that they live in a suburban or semi-urban location now, more people wanted to live either in an urban location or in a more rural location. Although our city has many suburban and semi-urban options, we will need to work to increase the amount of urban options that people can choose as well as protecting our rural areas. These changes in preferences for where people want to live is dramatic when you look at the different age groups. The millennial generation, those 18 through 34, are the most likely to want to live in an urban and semi-urban environment. Planning to increase those options in our region is an important strategy for attracting and keeping the millennial generation who we expect to be our workforce into the future. The Albuquerque area has recovered to some extent from the recession in 2008. As the Urban Land Institute points out, those cities who are looking into infill opportunities and improving walkability 
and transit opportunities are outshining other cities. Albuquerque continues to lag behind as most of our development continues to be subdivision development on our edges. Attracting millennials who will be our workers in the future as well as high-tech jobs will be an important economic development strategy in our region. Other cities are starting to see that investments in biking infrastructure, civic infrastructure, and transit are important strategies in attracting millennials and the high-tech jobs that are following them. The pictures on the left and right both symbolize public investment in our streets. The picture on the left works best for cars, but not well for any other users. The picture on the right includes investments that benefit the private investment and small businesses, as well as cyclists and pedestrians in the area. Although it represents a larger dollar value of public investment, the return on that investment through higher gross receipts taxes, as well as walkability benefits, are perhaps the wiser choice. Through our extensive public engagement efforts, we've heard many important things from the community. Many citizens are very concerned that we protect and enhance our distinct neighborhoods in the region. We will need respectful infill redevelopment to complement these neighborhoods and help us with economic development efforts. Citizens also asked for improvements to transit, pedestrian access, and trails throughout our region. Through our online survey, as well as instant polling in person at community workshops, citizens identified water availability and quality and jobs and economic development as the most important issues facing our region. The survey highlighted diversity, natural setting, and our climate and seasons as our top strengths in the region. The update to the jointly adopted City and County Comprehensive Plan will look to include the comments that we've heard through our extensive public engagement process. An updated comprehensive plan will include a new section that highlights the vision and becomes a people's summary of the very large document. If people don't want to read 300 pages, they can read a pull-out version that is the 30,000-foot view of what we want as a community. The plan will include updated sections on our background and the growth that we're expecting over the next 20 years. The heart of the comprehensive plan will be chapters by topic that include existing challenges and opportunities, as well as goals and policies that lead us to the community vision. Perhaps the most important update is a much strengthened implementation section, which will include both short-term strategies for both the city and the county to achieve the community vision, as well as longer-term actions and coordination needed with outside agencies and organizations. In September of 2015, ABC to Z released the first draft of an updated vision for the city and county. This vision takes as its heart the centers and corridor concept first introduced to the comprehensive plan in 2003. The vision includes a map of updated centers and corridors. This map begins with a backbone system of open space in our region. The map subtracts out unincorporated areas that the plan does not control. But centers are places of increased activity and density where you can find businesses, housing, and other amenities all in walking distance. Downtown is the first and perhaps most important center in our region. Urban centers are found throughout the city and provide opportunities for regional level employment, retail, and other amenities. Neighborhood centers offer smaller scale retail next to nearby neighborhoods. Village centers are found in unincorporated areas of Bernalillo County. They are intended to provide retail opportunities and job centers that draw from a larger geographic region, but are still at the scale appropriate for rural areas. Main streets offer small-scale retail opportunities near neighborhoods, but in a linear fashion along a corridor. Multimodal corridors are where you might expect to be able to take transit or ride a bike to get from center to center. Commuter corridors are primarily focused on being able to get from one area of the city to another by automobile quickly and efficiently.
Transit corridors have been incorporated from the Metropolitan Transportation Plan for 2040 as backbone corridors for enhanced transit service. This framework of centers and corridors is the same in the city and the county. The centers and corridors framework offers the opportunity for the city and the county to work together to plan for future growth in our region. One of the most important things that came out of our public engagement effort were guiding principles that will be woven throughout the comprehensive plan. These guiding principles include an emphasis on strong neighborhoods, on mobility, whether by foot, by car, on transit, or by bike, economic vitality that includes opportunities for all residents for good jobs, a focus on equity, community health, and sustainability. Based on community input, the comprehensive plan will include a new chapter on neighborhoods, a bolstered chapter on heritage conservation, and a brand new chapter on resilience and sustainability. The service provision chapter is a reorganization of much of the information from the existing comprehensive plan. This chapter is focused on those things that the city and the county don't directly control, but rather will need to coordinate with other agencies and departments. The comprehensive plan will include 10 chapters organized by topic that will discuss our existing challenges and opportunities and provide goals and policies that help us achieve our community vision. As an example, the city and the county will need to work with the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Water Utility Authority to provide high quality water into the future. In addition to many of the goals and policies brought over from the existing comprehensive plan, new goals and policies will be needed for certain new ideas. The city and the county have both adopted complete streets ordinances. Complete streets is a focus on providing opportunities for cyclists and pedestrians as well as transit users to our public streets. In addition, complete streets emphasize that the land use and transportation need to be coordinated together for high quality public environments. Complete streets focus on integrating land use and transportation to make sure that both are mutually beneficial. In addition, balancing the needs and safety of competing users is an important priority. The comprehensive plan will include a new emphasis on appropriate urban design for different centers and corridors. There will be some that are auto-oriented for more retail and regional opportunities, as well as those that are pedestrian-oriented and need to be adapted to pedestrian scale. An updated implementation section will include strong guidance for both the city and the county in terms of what we should be doing on a short-term basis as well as longer-term basis to achieve the community vision. The neighborhood chapter of the comprehensive plan will include a new organization of our community planning areas. Ongoing monitoring and implementation in these areas should allow us to track progress toward our goals over time. The Comprehensive Plan is a community document and will only be successful with your help. The Comprehensive Plan is currently being written. We need your help. The project website is abczone.com. There you can find draft documents for your review and comment, as well as information about upcoming meetings and focus groups. The Comprehensive Plan is expected to enter the review and approval process in late fall of 2015. We hope that you will participate in hearings because the future is in your hands. This is your vision and we need your comments to make sure that our future is what you want.